joints on the left, living the hills, but I still get a spread. Started with a little, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in at February 15, 2022, and the stock market is going crazy. I'm not going to stop saying that till it calms down, and today was absolutely insane. Literally, one for the books, the history books, memory books. It wasn't like that crazy, but it was pretty wild. We saw a ton of volatility, and it was based off of a sarcastic comment, so we're going to go over it. I have a real quick breakdown for you. We still have an important catalyst here for Wednesday in the minutes, but I have something important. I promise you by the end of this video, if you do not learn something about options to help you get a bag, I will pay you. I'm telling you, we need to go over a specific strategy. It is there in the title. $400 can turn into $20,000. I have a play. I'm going to show it to you, but the the whole idea with it, I'm telling you, I'm very excited. It may provide an answer to some of these volatility plays. So uh, we got a lot to talk about. I'm going to go over all of that. I got the keys. I got the plays. And then everything for the rest of the week. So uh, drop your thumbs up on the video if you find it helpful. I appreciate all of you, especially if you are positive and respectful. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. YouTube.com slash the stock market we will see you there in the morning and if you saw the morning i'm really just going to start the whole recap today so pretty much how we played out and when you look at it we did have a gap down there was all the tensions over the weekend then there was a meeting with sergey lavrov the defense minister of russia and he had some comments or he was really just talking to putin and he said we could pursue diplomatic measures and putin said okay and then everything went up and literally defense stocks in the morning they actually went down travel was down and then they shot up and then we opened up and things were pretty cool there really wasn't too many negative headlines but then as we went on throughout the day this is where it gets interesting we start selling off and I have to go back to this chart we did go lower than where we were on Friday and that was the key remember Friday was a big day the bond volatility it didn't get any worse than the couple days before that but essentially we went lower then we started going higher and then right here at VWAP, which correlated with the European close. There was a comment by the Ukrainian president, and he said that they have information that Russia was going to be attacked, or at least that's what it said on CNN. In his statement on Facebook, he made a Facebook post, and he pretty much said they were going to get attacked, but he meant it in a sarcastic way, like, yeah, everyone's saying we're going to get attacked, and he wanted to call for a day of unity, but the market, the algos, everybody else, it was a wild interpretation thing. We fell down about five points top to bottom on the S&P. And then as the government started to reiterate and let it know it was like an ironic, sarcastic statement, they confirmed that. And then things bounced back up. Even uh, Kirby from the Pentagon, he had no idea about the post. We were watching it live. So that's what made today so crazy. And just not to mention, we were coming off of a really, really bad Friday. So to put us down here and then to get all of that, it's like the tensions cooled off a little bit in the morning. Again, Again, even Zelensky, he invited Biden and all of the country leaders to come out and see how safe it is. He is still disagreeing of this idea of an imminent attack. So that's why when he flip flop, it was very wild. But it turns out to be lost in translation. We didn't quite pick up on it. Neither did the computers. And it led to a wild day. Now, that was the real driver on the day. But to break it down and what we talked about, I don't know if some of you have been in the market this long or if you have been watching, but I will tell tell you this does feel a lot like the trade war in 2018 and 2019 essentially Ukraine is the new trade war it's like these random news comes out or little updates in this case it's rumors this we don't know this they say it one week and then they walk it back the next week again a lot like the trade war the difference is you just don't have the president tweeting about it so keep that in mind and if you remember how the markets played out especially when it started out at first headlines would hit 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 and then it kind of cooled down and even that's something to watch from here we've been getting Ukraine headlines here and there you even got that safe haven move in what we've been talking about but pretty much from here on out maybe keep an eye out to see if uh, any Ukraine news hits a little bit less after watching uh, this little fiasco today
today, but that was a big driver on the day, but we keep talking about this, and this is going to be your catalyst here for Wednesday, but the Fed is still going to be the real driver behind markets, but what you got out of today, it really just highlighted what global tensions plus uncertainty can really do, and that's what you really got a lot of, so keep your head on a swivel. There is definitely a lot to digest. We will see, especially by Wednesday again. I'm just saying, if this is how we open up the week, especially after Friday, I could just only imagine the level of moves we are going to be getting here on the minutes on Wednesday. So watch out for that. But now coming into your first pretty picture, this is why I'm excited to talk about the put play. We're going to discuss it. But the first pretty picture is now showing you the monthly momentum on the NASDAQ, and it has now hit the largest point since 2008 and even larger than the 2018 crisis. So essentially, after that big flip a couple weeks ago, and now the fact that we're coming down, and you know, again, I'm bringing up this chart to really just show you we are back in the middle of peak volatility. You're really just one day away from talks about the third wave really being there, but you're pretty much right at this point. So this is what we need to keep in mind. A lot of people are really going to be looking at, hey, what's going on with the Fed? What's going on across the world? But ultimately, where we go in position by the end of this week, this will stay a lot, but we talked about this yesterday. This is going to start the clock on a lot of different things. So essentially, the volatility is back, but realistically, the real direction on what is going to happen to the market the rest of the year, that is going to happen after the Fed meeting. So trade accordingly and be smart. We were talking about it today, and now we'll see when we go over some of these plays. There's these opportunities, but you're seeing this back and forth. If you really want to just catch the trend and not have to worry and stress about it, you really just wait for the Fed, and that will be a clear-cut catalyst, and you will definitely get a trend set after that. But the main point is you are in big volatility, and as we move forward this week to see where it goes, you're going to have the minutes, and that will be in focus, and we talked about it, and I've already brought it up. This should probably be the only focus of the market, but watch out for these global tensions. We saw what could happen. Watch out for the safe havens. See if certain things start running, and that's one thing you got to keep in mind with this volatility we've been seeing. Literally, global tensions increases safe haven demand. Bonds are one of those. That's why sometimes during these moments, you watch TLT go up because it kind of slows down the yields going up. And that's why, too, if things calm down, watch out for yields to go higher. But keep your eye on that. Any of the data, another big update here for the rest of this week. We may also hear from China and their second rate cut or, again, second consecutive month of it. So that could have some effects as well, too. But coming into the company news and events, uh, just going to keep it very, very simple here today. We're going to spend a little bit more time here going over the plays, but that sarcastic comment from Ukrainian President Zelensky, that was literally the biggest news most of everybody was talking about it today. Again, he made a Facebook post calling for a day of unity, but he sarcastically mentioned that they're going to get attacked. Again, he mentioned it sarcastically saying that he doesn't believe it, and it really sparked a lot of this back and forth, and then there was another update that apparently the United States is already destroying files and other stuff over there in Ukraine as they are worried about a security risk if anything happens. So we're going to get a lot of updates. Again, at the very least, even since Friday, there's just a new smell in the air. It's just literally the tensions are a little bit or a lot different than a couple weeks ago, but it seems like a lot of the facts of the situation haven't changed too much. So be nimble and get ready. But there was that. And then after hours, uh, this was actually pretty big news. We'll see how this plays out. But regular Regulators are now probing uh, block trading or the practice, and they're looking at Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and a couple of Wall Street firms. They essentially are saying in the process of these block trades, some of these big banks, they were essentially tipping off some other people before they made big buys or sells on using block trades. So pretty interesting. We'll watch how that plays out. And then finally, a little update here with the Ukraine stuff. The White House made a statement, and they said that they are seeking to avoid a gas price shock from the Ukraine crisis, and they are are working with other countries and companies to mitigate shock. So we'll see. I mean, again, oil did already go up and oil should have been down again. If you remember, we talked about last week. So to watch it even go up and act as this like safe haven type move or reacting to what's going on, it is very important. And if it keeps going higher, just be on the lookout. Maybe oil prices could get a little crazy. So we will see what happens. But there is definitely a lot we're going to deal with this week. Today was just a sample. It is only only going to get crazier. We know what we got to look out for, but don't underestimate how important the Fed is, and I hope you're ready, but that is pretty much it. 
So, let us get into the place. So, right off the bat, I got three stocks that I'm looking at coming in tomorrow, but we need to talk about this strategy. I am going to go over spy puts, and well, this may very well be an answer to a lot of the difficulty trading in this environment. Now, we'll go over this on stream. I'm sure over the next few days, I'll go over a couple with you on this, but really what inspired this, I saw an article today and it was talking about one of the biggest hedge puts oh dude hedge put short dude on the s p but they used a butterfly and then i started looking into it and i was like this is a very interesting trade and then i started running the profit calculator i wanted to see something about it but pretty much i believe the max gain on this trade is uh upwards of 39 million dollars on an investment of 2 million and then you could even do it small here with about $400 and then the upside is about 20,000 now that is not what sticks out to me what sticks out to me a butterfly is a very difficult trade to hit the key is you got to set your own range and find the sweet spot of where you think the market is going to be but I hope you see something about uh, this profit and loss potential. I mean, here's the number one thing I'm going to show you, and it'll probably click for you right here. But essentially, if you made this play and then tomorrow this spy went to 355 or 335, you would make about 500% $2,600 on a $400 investment, right? So you're like, that sounds kind of good, but if this spy dropped uh, 100 points, wouldn't you expect more than 500%? Well, exactly. And now take a look. Essentially with the butterfly, if it went to 350 or a little bit higher, I think the sweet spot on this one is like 345, even higher than 335 by expiration, you would wind up making $14,000 or $20,000 instead and get 4,000%. So hopefully you see the difference. And now go back to this guy's play here. And if you don't know the play, pretty much what he did, we'll go over it. But he bought the 370 puts for April, sold the 350s, and then bought the 330s. So he spent about $2 million. And it's a way for him to play between 370 and 350. And then even before and anything below, it would kind of cover him there. Again, this is a butterfly strategy. But going back to his play, it's the same thing. If the market went down a lot he would make 500% if it did it quick but what you notice with this chart is that as the spy goes down if it goes down more over time he's essentially able to make more now there is definitely a cutoff there is definitely some downside to this position and you could definitely see it here but essentially in volatility the profit chart kind of just shows you the gradual write-off with how this plays because usually if this was a normal put play it would look like this but on the downside where essentially the first further you are by the time, then essentially, if you're not at your strike price, you end up losing. So this is what I was going over here. This is the big play that we saw. And really, this is what I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. And this is going to be one of the first plays. I want to see if there are some spy butterflies that we could remix. So what I wanted to show you was this general idea. And as you can see here, if we get a lot of this choppiness, if we do play out like 2018, where it goes down and then up and then down and then up, and then ultimately a month or two now is going to lead 15, 10% lower. If that's what you believe, this is literally the perfect strategy and it allows you to play it a little bit cheap while giving you some of the crazy upside. So I want to see it. But now the real question is, where do you set the butterfly? Because like we're talking about, it's all about the ranges. What put do you buy? Which ones do you sell? And then what is the range that you're going to be using? So we'll go over this tomorrow, but that is the first play. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a tool under your tool belt, but watch out for that. The second play I'm going to be looking at is going to be Walmart, and I did go for the pre-earnings play today, uh, especially after the discount. If we woke up this morning, I brought this one on the watch list. They sold off right away. The plays were down 50%, so they report this week. I said, all right, let me grab one. I grabbed one play for about $100, but even during the volatility, they started to go up, and they held that premium, so if these premiums hold up, I think it will be good, but don't forget, Walmart is a pre-earnings play, and they have earnings this week, so watch out for that one, but as far as the play, I decided to go with the next week 138 call and I only grabbed one I spent about a dollar 30 wanted to keep it small decently near the money and my logic is I could either play this for earnings but I feel like we got it at a pretty low price so if it does end up kind of shooting back here in earnings make like a quick 150 percent small amount if it does go crazy we'll see what happens but 
but keeping it as small exposure. But that was the play. And then coming into the third play, a net baby. So we made a play on this. I went both ways on the weekly. They reported today. I knew they had time. I said, okay, we'll go after the weekly. And a net has moved a lot. We've hit some pretty big plays on it. I played both ways with about 150 bucks, so $300 total. But they did beat on earnings and they did good. Watch out for a big post earnings continuation. Again, we've hit plays immediately, but in the last couple earnings, Anet has had some pretty crazy post earnings. So essentially, if the software names do hold up tomorrow, this is definitely one I'm going to be watching, and I think it'll be a good one. So as far as the play, I grabbed the weekly 140 call for $1.50, and then I got the like 100 or 110 put for about $150 as well too. So $300, we'll see how it plays. I may add more tomorrow for the post earnings. So we will see what happens as far as everything else. I made a couple of plays. The other play I made today was a space, uh, and I got a next week $14 call, but I only bought 10 of them at $0.04. Cents. And the logic behind the play, there was an updater. If you go to their website, they started having like uh, reservations or that you could start to uh, get on a list, a reserve space flight. Apparently, they opened it up for shareholders last week, and then this, we got it as news, but it ended up uh, being news from Friday. So a little bit of a reaction. I got it early. I thought I'd go small with it, but 40 bucks. that one ended up getting clapped, so we'll see what happens with that. And then I went with a Facebook call and this was simply because the puts held their value. I've been talking about how I want some of the downside. I still have those June plays with a lot of time, but I've been talking about how I didn't like Facebook being kind of oversold. So thought I'd get some small plays and grab a couple of calls. So I went with the March Facebook 285 calls. I bought them about like 48 cents. They ended up holding that value pretty much all day. So we'll see how those play out coming into tomorrow. And then I sold out of that Zillow $60 call. We got that post earnings, sold the first one out at 100%. They went back up to 250, sold the second one out and got out of that play. As far as everything else for tomorrow, going to be watching a lot of plays. First thing first is going to be travel, even the defensive names. Again, with any of the tensions, watch out for that. But it seems like travel names are going to move. You are getting getting Marriott earnings in the morning. So even watch Airbnb and how they play out. But Airbnb, even in the volatility today, they did very, very good. So watch out for that. And remember, they have earnings. A lot of people have asked about the play. I might sell out of that final April set, but I may just even cut it in half and hold a couple. But I'm holding all the leaps in any play that is down more than 70%. I'm definitely going to be holding. Even if it's down like 50%, uh, I'm still going to be holding on it. The question is, what do I do with the option plays that are up before? It may be wise to trim, but we'll see the Marriott earnings, how we're feeling, but I do have a lot of faith in Airbnb, so we will see what happens, but watch them. Watch XOM. Again, oil and everything going on, they've kind of been a safe haven, so keep your eye out for that. Roblo, our plays are back up. They have earnings tomorrow. Again, same logic there with Airbnb, and I think their earnings will be good as well, too, but we will see what happens. Anet for the post earnings, and then Walmart. Just don't forget, I think it's going to be a sleeper. We made a play, so I like that. Uh, Merck, uh, Myrna, Johnson & Johnson, a lot of the vaccine companies, they got clapped. Myrna had their own baby mama drama. Then there was a report about a vaccine uh, demand dropping, and that wasn't good. But Merck, our old put, started to come back up, and those were dead. So it looks like uh, fear is hitting the chain there a little bit. So watch out for that. JP Morgan Banks, I think, is going to be very, very interesting after the Fed minute. So see where they kind of stabilize, and they're kind of at that point right before last week. So we'll see how they play out. Watch them. RSX, again, options are pretty crazy, but as we get some of these tensions in the back and forth, I mean, this may very well be a good ETF to play. So it, I, I always look at it too late. So just keep your eye on it and, and you want to play it early while everything's calm, if anything. But watch out for them. NVIDIA, they got their earnings. They were up a lot today and then came down, but definitely watch them. It's good to see them close green. And then defense names like LMT, like we said, and then TLT in the dollar. Uh, the main thing I keep pointing out here is that when you look at the dollar, it has been going up. But the fact it's at the same price, it's not really giving us an indicator except that everything is really going crazy because now bonds, stocks, anything you could think of, safe havens, uh, almost everything is all moved while the dollar's staying the same. So that's what we got to watch out for. But the real key is, do we break below here? Just don't forget, anything below here is a very, very big danger zone. The reason we haven't is because you kind of have an excuse for some safe haven demand out of the whole Ukraine situation. So we'll see how it plays out, but definitely watch the bonds. Nothing really changed dramatically with the Fed futures today, and that's why we got to wait for the minutes or if there is any other Fed comments that could uh, give us 
this a lot, so we will see what happens, but I hope you're ready, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra your whole team ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shine. I need you to remember those negative thoughts ain't new, baby, but the code loves you all. I'll see you in the morning. Let's go.